Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this Mass that will begin soon here at St. Joseph's Parish in Mechanicsburg. Uh, in these few minutes before we begin this liturgy, perhaps you would like to place your intentions or your prayers that you are offering specifically during this Mass in the comment section of this post. If you do that, um, I will then take these intentions with me to the altar during this Mass as we unite them with the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus. And we're doing this so that while we are physically separated, we want you to know that your prayers and your desires are indeed united with us here at this altar. We're going to continue to do this uh, before every Mass, around five minutes or so before Sunday Mass or our daily Mass, we will uh, give you the opportunity to post your prayers right before the live stream Masses. Um, please know that you will be in our hearts, whether you post a prayer or not, uh, during this wonderful celebration that we have. And hopefully you and your family can participate a little bit more actively during the sacrifice of the Mass. If you are in need of finding our worship aid for this Mass, which is the third Sunday of Easter, April 26th, please go to our website. And once you have the website up, click immediately on Join Us for Mass. And that will take you directly to the worship aid for today. And so we'll give a few moments now before we begin Mass, and if you'd like to pull up your worship aid or post some prayers for us to remember, please do so now. I look forward to being with you in prayer very soon. Jesus, his risen Son, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. 
and and with with your spirit. spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed, all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus, the Nazarene, was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore my heart has been glad, and my tongue has exalted. My flesh, too, will dwell in hope. Because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him, that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourself with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your feudal conduct handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along the way? They stopped looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, what sort of things? They said to him, the things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. How our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophet spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, 
he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Everyone who knows me knows what a huge sports fan I am. I think maybe I better move out of the way in case lightning wants to strike here. Thought I'd say that just to get your attention. But you know, ask me who composed a symphony or an opera, I could give you a pretty well educated guess, if not the correct answer. But don't ask me which football team belongs to the AFC or the NFC. For those answers, I have to go to the other priest I live with or members of the staff here. Now, what I think what really stunted any interest I may have had in football happened when I was about 12 years old. My dad took my younger brother and me with a group of his friends on a bus trip to a Penn State football game. And I was turned off not because it was the Nittany Lions, but from the moment we set out early that Saturday morning in Harrisburg to the moment we returned, it rained like you've never seen it rain before. And once on campus, we had to leave the warmth and the shelter of the bus and go into the stadium and sit there the entire game. No umbrellas allowed. Certainly not my idea of a fun time. And then to top it all off, Penn State lost the game. Well, fast forward a few years when I was studying in the seminary at the North American College in Rome. I regret, I regret to say that I never had a chance to see, you know, not their version of football, soccer, but an opera. Not once during the four years that I spent in the eternal city in that land of culture and arts, did I see an Italian opera in Rome. But not all is lost. One year our seminary took a trip to Russia, and it was my first opportunity to see an opera in Moscow. And we were there under communist rule. I wasn't really into opera that much back then, but there were two tickets that were offered to our group, and there was a lottery for those tickets. And it was an opportunity to see an opera at all places in the Bolshoi Theater. Now everyone wanted to go, the football fans included. What an opportunity to have seen an opera in the Bolshoi. It was Tosca by Buccini, and I had no idea what the story was about, but who would miss that chance to say, I've been to the Bolshoi? Well, I actually won one of those tickets, and that sort of started an interest for me in opera. And since then, I've seen a few operas either in a theater 
or on a few clips on YouTube. One thing I don't get though, whether it be in the theater or at a football game, is that when the performance seems to be lacking or the team seems to be heading into maybe another loss, loyal fans get fed up and they leave. They don't stick around to the bitter end. They bail out. But then I have to admit that I take some enjoyment when I hear that maybe this loyal fan missed out on a stellar performance by the supporting actress in the second act, or their team pulled from behind to win in the last seconds of the game. I want to say, take that for bailing out. You know, today in the Gospel from St. Luke, we hear of this encounter of Jesus with those two disciples on the road to Emmaus. And this occurred the very day that our Lord rose from the dead. It's possible that those two disciples on that road, walking away from Jerusalem, walking in the opposite direction from where the center of their meaning for their existence was, that they were bailing out because they were maybe disappointed by the events of Easter. That empty tomb did not bolster their faith. Instead, that empty tomb deflated their faith. And so here they are, skipping town. So what makes them then turn around and rejoin the troops? Well, we find that two things happen. One is an act of hospitality, and one is an experience of the Eucharist. Now, in their act of hospitality, in inviting this stranger into their home, little did they realize that they were going to have an actual encounter with the risen Christ. Here they are walking with Jesus all the while, but they didn't realize who this stranger was. Jesus is conducting a Bible study with them as he walked along with them, and they were preoccupied during that conversation. They heard words, but they really weren't listening. They were in another world. And yet, all the time, Jesus was preparing them for what was in store when they would sit down together at table. And a lesson that I personally learn from this part of the story is that when I don't get it at first, when it takes me some time to understand or to realize the meaning that our Lord has in an experience, it's okay. Jesus is there, still trying to teach me. And so I ask myself, am I open to allowing the Lord Jesus to be there? That he will open my eyes to that spiritual insight that he wants to give me. The second thing that happens in this story is the Eucharist, the breaking of bread. And with that sacrament, the two disciples understood. Their eyes were open. They recognized him. Their hearts were burning and would continue to burn. And so the only thing that they could do is go back to Jerusalem, to their center, and to proclaim that they had an experience of the risen Lord. So one of the other things that Emmaus teaches me is that Jesus always identifies with us. He wants to meet us face to face. He identified with our sinfulness, this God who became man, and he took those sins with him to the cross. He identifies when we're at any loss, as he did in meeting those disciples, 
And the Lord Jesus certainly identifies with our spiritual hungers. I know that there is a starvation these days, a starvation for the wonderful sacrament of the Eucharist, a desire for everyone to receive the actual body and blood of our Lord. He knows how hungry we are, and he is here with us. You know, there are many ways that our Lord Jesus invites us to recognize his presence. The breaking of the bread in Emmaus happens in many different ways. The Eucharist helps us to open our eyes, as it did those two disciples, to the presence of Christ in our daily lives, and especially in the unexpected. It is so wonderful to be Catholic, for God has gifted every one of us with a call to a church that has scripture, tradition, and the magisterium, the teaching office of the church as its foundation. And we are so blessed to have the sacraments and works of charity. In the Eucharist, we are able to touch, to taste, to see, to experience the presence of our risen Lord. But like those two disciples, we must allow our eyes to be open and then to get up from the table and witness to the wonders of the risen Jesus in our lives. Another thing the Emmaus story teaches is that as a Christian, my friends, there is no bailing out. When the game of life seems to be going wrong, we can always count on Jesus walking toward and with us, for we are always on the right team. And we will win, but we must stay the course and not give up or go in any direction except to him who is the center of our lives. Our Lord has invited us here today. He is with us on our journey. And yes, it is a blessing even to be able to gather together in this virtual setting. And hopefully, in our spiritual hunger, we will always allow the Lord Jesus to lead us more deeply towards him. He whose presence, especially in unexpected and surprising ways, always offers us grace to continue our walk of faith. Together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With our faith and hope set on God, let us offer these prayers in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Our response is, Lord, receive our prayer. For the church, as we journey through the centuries, may she answer the call of every crisis with the peace and healing of Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. For our country's leaders, may their integrity and compassion mirror the justice of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. For those suffering from COVID-19 and any other disease, may they find strength in Christ, who had first to suffer before entering into glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. For peace in homes where there is economic hardship and in every heart riddled with unrest, for those serving in our military, and that all migrant, immigrants, refugees, and persecuted Christians throughout the world will know the Lord's presence in their struggles. We pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. For our beloved departed, may they see Jesus face to face today, especially Patricia Hertzek, Doug Jurek, Betty Husick, Anna Hummel, Francis Fitzgerald, and the people of the parish, both living and deceased, whom we, we remember at this Mass today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. Good God, you revealed your Son to his shocked friends after the resurrection giving them joy. Give us joy in your presence today, even amidst the struggles of a life in quarantine. We ask you to receive all the prayers that we offer you today, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit 
and perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful, for his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Ronald our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Again, it was so good being with you today um, as we begin this wonderful day. Uh, just a few announcements. With the uh, month of May uh, approaching at the end of the week, a month that is dedicated to our Blessed Mother, on Friday, May 1st, we'll start praying the Rosary directly after every weekday Mass 
and after the 945 Sunday Mass. Please join us for that as we honor our Blessed Mother. Also, beginning Friday, May 1st, we're going to continue our Friday evening Eucharistic Adoration. We'll begin that at 7.30 on Friday evenings. We'll include prayers such as the Rosary, a night prayer. We will have benediction, and then we will close with our candlelight procession to the Blessed Mother. We uh, ask you, if you would like, to post any prayer intentions on our Facebook page for both that ceremony and for any of the Masses that you join us for. Again, Friday evenings from 7.30 to 8.30, we will continue our Eucharistic Adoration. And now the prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.